But we begin with the story of the mass shootings at Fort Hood yesterday, with new details that broke over the course of the day and into tonight. The death toll now stands at 13. The bodies are being flown to Dover Air Force Base, where autopsies will be performed. Chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff, Admiral Mike Mullen, will travel to Dover tonight to attend the arrival of the remains of those killed in the attack. The number of those reported wounded in the attack has increased. The military now saying that 34 people, in addition to those killed, suffered gunshot wounds in the attack, and nine others suffered other non-gunshot injuries caused by the attack. Among the dead are 12 U.S. soldiers and one civilian Army health care provider. The alleged gunman, Army Major Nidal Malik Hassan, we now know was shot four times. He survived and has been transferred to Brook Army Medical Center in San Antonio. He is said to be in a coma and in the intensive care unit. Authorities have not been able to talk to him, but investigators have examined his computer, his apartment, and they've gone through his garbage. Law enforcement officials have revealed one of the handguns used by Hassan in the shooting rampage was an FN 5.7, a semi-automatic pistol known for being lightweight and for its use with so-called cop killer bullets designed to penetrate body armor. Hassan bought the weapon legally at a Killeen, Texas gun store called Guns Galore. Some of the new details out today conflict with some of the first reports out yesterday. Among the details that were inaccurate, Mr. Hassan was not a member of ROTC, as has been previously reported. He did sign up for the military after high school, and he graduated with honors from Virginia Tech. Mr. Hassan was also not set to deploy to Iraq at the end of this month. He was actually headed to Afghanistan. Major Hassan's first cousin issued this statement today on behalf of Hassan's family. Quote, our family is filled with with grief for the victims and their families involved in yesterday's tragedy. We are mortified and there's no justification whatsoever for what happened. We cannot explain nor do we excuse or understand what happened yesterday. Yesterday's violence in no way reflects the feelings, beliefs, or principles of our family. We have spoken with the FBI, answered all of their questions, provided them with all the information we have. We are humbled by the overwhelming support from friends and colleagues who know our family, know our values, know our commitment to our community community and know our love for America. Fort Hood, as you know, is the largest U.S. military base. It is home to two Army divisions, the 1st Cavalry and the 4th Infantry Divisions. The 1st Cavalry is now deployed in Iraq. Today, we reached out to the Command Sergeant Major of the 1st Cav in Baghdad to find out how his soldiers are coping with the knowledge of this shooting back at home where many of their families live. Command Sergeant Major Rory Malloy told us this, quote, Our hearts go out, excuse me, our hearts and prayers go out to the families of the soldiers we lost yesterday, the wounded and the troopers at Fort Hood. We are remaining focused on our combat mission and greatly appreciate the comfort of knowing we have a strong chain of command and support system in place to care for our families back home. Our families remain resilient through the many tough times they have faced throughout this deployment. The chain of command here in Iraq are working with the troopers to ensure they know we have counselors available for them here in Iraq if they need assistance. Joining us now is MSNBC military analyst Colonel Jack Jacobs. Colonel Jacobs, thanks very much for joining us. Well, my pleasure, Rachel. First of all, let me just ask if there's any new information that's become available tonight. I know you're there at Fort Hood. Or if there's any new background you've been able to find on the shooter or on this crime. Well, the weapon you mentioned uh, is an extremely powerful weapon. Um, my understanding is that it is extremely expensive. It, uh, it, it costs about $1,000, and the ammunition isn't cheap either. It fires a very, very powerful uh, bullet at a very high rate of speed and is extremely destructive. Uh, it's just, that's the only thing that I can turn up that's, that hasn't been mentioned before. Uh, I did discover also what you had said, that he got it legally. Any time any military person has a weapon and, tr and, has, and brings it on post, it must be registered with the military police. And anybody with a weapon on post who doesn't have it registered is in big trouble. And I do not know whether or not this, this weapon had been registered. Jack, one of, the, um, one of the issues that's been hard to understand about this story, particularly for those of us who aren't that familiar with weapons, is the feasibility that one person armed with two handguns, even if they are semi-automatic and very powerful handguns, could do this much damage, could wound or kill more than 40 people, a single shooter with two pistols. Does it seem feasible to you all in all? No, it doesn't, actually. The math doesn't work out. One guy... Even two weapons with 20 rounds per weapon 
uh, inflicting more than 40 wounds, even in a confined space, it doesn't make any sense. Uh, my conclusion is, unfortunately, that uh, some of the killed and wounded uh, may have been uh, may have been injured or killed by uh, by friendly fire and we won't know exactly what happened uh, for quite some time until the investigation is completed but the numbers just don't work out that this guy inflicted all the casualties what do you think that the army investigation or the forensic investigation in general will be looking at here will will they be looking to see if major hassan should have been red flagged by the chain of command somehow what else will they be looking for well, certainly that. They're also going to try to figure out uh, who should have done it. Don't forget, he was in the hands of a wide variety of people from the time he entered uh, uh, medical school until the time he finally got here uh, to, uh, to, Fort, uh, to Fort Hood. Uh, we do know, uh, it's been reported, that the person who was the supervisor who assigned patients at the time that uh, Major Hassan was going through his residency was reluctant to send him any because Major Hassan was not very good at what he did, uh, was, was a loner, uh, didn't communicate well, and so on. So whatever red flags occurred, occurred some time ago before he even got here. And I think the other thing that's going to that's gonna be turned up by the investigation is that there is a variety of things that the chain of command could have done from the very beginning of this guy's tenure uh, back at Walter Reed that uh, should have been picked up. He should have been yanked out of the system and something positive should have done e either to fix him or, or to take him out of the system altogether and maybe this tragedy would have been avoided. When you look at what we know about Major Hassan, or Major Hassan, I'm not exactly sure how to say it. I've seen it both ways today. Um, when you look at his record, you look at the fa his, his army rank, you look at the amount of time that he'd been in service, the fact that he hadn't yet deployed, uh, the fact that he was due to deploy, is there anything that stands out to you as, as, as strange, as either as an, him as an underperforming soldier or somebody who maybe shouldn't have been at the rank that he was? Well, uh, uh, everything about him is strange. Now, generally speaking, I don't think I'm wrong. Uh, when somebody enters and then uh, b uh, becomes a medical doctor, he becomes a captain. And when he, when he gets certified in his specialty, frequently and maybe even always, he gets elevated to the rank of major. But he has evidently been an underperforming uh, soldier for quite some time. And what's really striking uh, is that nothing apparently was done about it uh, until this tragedy. MSNBC military analyst Colonel Jack Jacobs joining us tonight from Fort Hood. Thank you for your time, Jack. It's great to have you on the show. You're welcome, Rachel.